crusades, two days before three months, the thing, and he went and gave it. We got $215 back. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. See, <laughs> whether you are sitting in the belly of the fish or sitting in the lion's den, the Lord listens to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God listens to you. That's the word. Let us read. <clears throat> Let us take a job. See, when I gave, when God gave me this one, then immediately my question was, Lord, I know that you are listening to me. I, you, I know that you listen to our prayers. But many of our brothers and sisters, they have this question. Why this is not happening? I am praying to the Lord. I have been, for years I have been praying for this particular, uh, particular need. Something like you have an intention. You have a prayer request. You ask the Lord, I want this to happen. But it is not happening. Why? So you have a question within you. Thank you, brother. You have a question in you. Why my prayers are not answered? So immediately we start, we become like a job. <laughs> we become like job. Can we, can we read that verse? Job, yeah, job 30, 20. Job 30, chapter 30, verse 20. You see there, I cry out to you, O God, but you do not answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. <laughs> honestly speaking, honestly speaking, you, you guys tell me how many of you said this to the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. You have said that. I would say sometimes, you know, I don't want to say lie here. I also said sometimes, but very, you know, long, long ago. Sometimes. Lord, I've been praying, but there is no answer. You merely look at me. Don't you listen to my prayer? We, we ask Lord, right? We become, do not judge the Lord. Do not charge the Lord with the words of Job, I tell you today. Yeah, so let us go first. When I put that question in me, why the prayers are not answered, Lord? You say that you listen to me, but my prayers are not answered. Why? So if you are with me, I would like to share with you a few points why our prayers are not answered, or why the situations look like as if we our prayers are we don't realize God is listening to us. I would like to encourage on those points. The number one I would take, uh, check if your prayers are according to God's will. Maybe the second slide you can put on, sister. If your prayers are according to the will of the Lord, have you ever thought about that? I want this. I want to go there. I want that. I want this. Everything we have, you know, like, when we go into the shopping mall, right? I just want to go and buy, say about a tie. I'm, I'm talking about, especially this, applica this is applicable for the ladies. Especially ladies from Asia. <laughs> so they step into the mall, they want to buy one tie, then the list continues, the list continues, the list goes on and on and on, we have our list of items with the Lord as well. Yes? Now the, now the question is, if our intentions, our prayers are according to the will of the Lord is the question. So how we can, let us turn to 1st John chapter 5. Let us turn to 1st John chapter 5, verse 14. Chapter 1 John chapter 5 verse 14. This is how it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Mark this word. According to whose will? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many of us, we even we believers, we forget that if our prayers are according to His will. I just want this. It is not happening. I just want this. So it has to. So sometimes it is because our prayers 
our petitions not not matching with god's will that could be one reason the second thing could be little uh, sensitive part but i would like to share here our inner lust dreams and illusions we have our hidden lust illusions inside but outwardly we pray that take an example today morning we had a beautiful sermon you know very meaningful sermon somebody shared uh, brother joel shared here simpson the very intention of simpson samson in english samson very intention the birth of samson was to bring salvation to the jewish from the philistines but what did he do he could not give away drinking he could not give away going after women he failed finally he failed how many are with me on that so he the inner lust illusions inner bad thoughts that with that if our words are our lips are simply murmuring i want this i want that lord i want to get rid of my drinking habit but the evening onwards or when nobody is there you go and sit and drink you think god is going to listen to your prayer no i tell you today he is not let us turn to let us take psalm 66 or maybe we'll go with james first james chapter 4 verse 3 If anyone has taken you may read James chapter 4 verse 3 yes and maybe NIV would be more better when you ask you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasure how many of you really thought about this i want to have something oh i want to go to las vegas and be in the casino Lord, give me money. See, some of you are laughing, right? Isn't it funny? Is it's funny, right? Do you think God is going to give you money and say that yes, my baby, I love you. Go and enjoy in Las Vegas. And some of our prayers are like that. Very sad to say that. Some of our prayers are like that. So the deceitful, the lustful nature that we don't want to get away, but our lips are saying, Lord, I want this, I want that. Is it for your pleasure? your prayers are not going to be answered i'm telling you today maybe one more verse psalm 66:18 that that david the one who cherishes lord's presence the one who really enjoyed the hand of god in every situation he declares you see psalm 66:18 if i had cherished sin in my heart the lord would not have listened story of listen to me that's it the story of me now i want to say i want to tell a story here you see some there there used there was a a saint a holy man had two disciples these two disciples they were walking by the river side according to their um, their congregation their law they are not supposed to touch women you are following me with me so this is a story but you would have something here like these two they walked along the river side and when when they were going by the river side they saw a woman drowning so their law forbids touching the woman but one of them said no we need to save her we need to jump in pick her up bring and they jumped into the river and they pulled her out and the other one stood by the rule he did not jump in he was standing right there no my rule says no i should not touch women so the other one jumped in touched brought her back put her on the floor they saved her life they went back to their room they spent the time the night was over the next day morning the two were very good friends but they but they were not having much converse, uh, conversation so the one was asking what happened like why are you why are you like silent you are not normal is something wrong that i did so the other one was saying no no yesterday you touched that woman yesterday you lifted her up that is against our law now the first one says see i touched her i lifted her to save her life i had nothing in wrong in me i left her there but you are still carrying her in your heart you understand that 
like many of us today sitting here, we say that we are sanctified by the blood of Jesus. We are we have come to a pure life, a holy life. We are so called Christians. But still we have this lust, we have this unwanted garbage in our heart, in our body. And we still say that, Lord, hear my prayer, I pray, blah, blah, blah. Do you think God is going to listen to you? God is going to sanction what you are? Don't, don't argue that, oh, Lord will not listen to the sinner's prayer. He will, but a repented sinner. You with me? A repented sinner. Yes, he listens to. He looks at the heart. Sanctify your heart. That's what the Bible says. Purify your heart. Maybe the third one I would say, respond God in action. You ask for God something and you don't respond to God with your action. What does that mean? You need to put your action, showing your action that you trust upon the Lord. He is going to do. Respond to him. He grants you something. He gives you something. Or he tells that, okay, my son, I'm going to give this to you. How, how is your response? Take it to, jo let, us, let us go to Joshua. The book of Joshua. Let us go there. The book of Joshua, it says, see, Joshua 7, 10 to 13, if you read, if you read the whole chapter, like you know, Joshua, what happened when they went for the war and the, and the, the members... With, uh, along with Joshua, those who were with Joshua, they took uh, what God has asked uh, an abomination in the sight of the Lord. They took and they held with them. Because of that, these, the Jews were, the Israelites were defeated and Joshua felt very sad and he was crying all day night. Just to give you a background of the story. So in Joshua, this is what the Lord says. If you read 10 to 13, go, consecrate the people. Tell them, consecrate yourself in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There are devoted things among you, Israel. You cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them. So, God, when God says something is wrong in you, something that you are not supposed to hold on to you, something that in your life you should get away with, but you still hold on. Your action is not what the Lord is asking you to. You are still holding on to it. And then you are asking, Oh Lord, I want this. Oh Lord, my, my, my prayer is not answered. Lord is not going to answer you. Or you won't feel, you won't experience the answer already given to you in your life. You agree with me? Amen? The other, other one I would say, holding on to grudge with somebody else. If you are angry with somebody, someone, oh, you know, I cannot forgive that fellow. You know what wrong he did, you know how rubbish he spoke on me. I can never forget, forgive him in my life. There is only one thing you, if you see, if you carefully read Bible, the Lord's Prayer, if you see, if you notice that, the Lord says, Forgive us, forgive our sins as we. There is a condition there. There is a condition, right? So the Lord expects you to be forgiving, loving. And you don't forgive others. Even at the age of 90, I, I cannot talk to that guy. He did. See, we never know when our life on this earth is going to end. Holding on to the grudge about your lips and coming inside the church. <laughs> Everyone coming inside the church, we say that, Ah, oh, holy, holy, holy Lord, I am holy, you are holy, and I say you are a liar. Take that away from you. If you keep the grudge of somebody in your heart and then you pray, you may not be answered. I'm telling you, my dear brothers and sisters. This morning. Let us turn turn on to. Let us, you know, every verse let's go with the Bible. So that it is not me speaking. It is the Lord through the Holy Spirit has given the word. First Peter. Let us take First Peter 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. This is how Peter writes. Therefore. Can anyone read please? First Peter. Yes. 1 and 2. Can you read First Peter. 1, 2. Therefore, get rid of yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, 
and stand slander of every kind like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation peter says an apostle on which god built his church we need to give away our grudge i know to somebody god is telling today that if your prayers need to be answered you need to take away the grudge that you are holding on to still i don't know to someone today god is speaking to that's the same thing paul writes to first timothy second cha- second chapter verse 8 he says therefore i want the men everywhere to pray lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing paul writes to his beloved son timothy his beloved disciple he says i want every man my dear brothers and sisters this morning we are here to worship the lord thank the lord can we say that yes i don't have grudge against my brother sister no one well when if you if you ask me holding a grudge doesn't mean that you forgive somebody and then you forget which is okay you somebody did something wrong to you you have forgiven and you forget that okay it doesn't mean that you need to go back and then compromise and compromise and say that oh i forgive you come on come on let us be friends it 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 i would say it is technically it is not needed required if you really forgive him god knows that you have forgiven him if you re- if you if you really did not forgive him but your lips say that you have forgiven him god knows that as well right so you forgive him throw away the grudge against him surrender to the lord he is going to answer to your prayer the last or uh, maybe there are two more points i would like to uh, share and finish praying without an expectation in faith you pray for something but your mind has already determined oh this is not going to happen how many years i have been praying for this you know i'm praying for that girl but i know that she is not going to change have you ever said though we are praying for somebody's salvation we are praying for someone to come to the lord but our mind is already determined saying that oh she is not going to come because she is a very adamant girl you know so you don't believe in your faith then you don't have faith god is going to because bible says except god the father even christ will not know that's what jesus says Christ he he declares I do not know the time and hour the salvation a person would get the person would come to me except God the father he says so who are we to judge then we have decided like that there, there is again I would I would I would narrate a story here um, a guy who okay how many of you know about sadhus from india sadhu are the holy people yeah sister no sadhus from india they have they they call something called yaga which means they they open up a fire then they put one after the other a fruit a vegetable you know like they give us a burnt offering one after the other so a sadhu a holy man he believed he wanted to get some blessing from a god of his belief so he opened up a fire pit and then he started putting so uh, putting apples so thousand apples he kept because somebody told him if you put pray and put keep on putting one apple god would come any time you know if you believe and put god will come any time at least thousand you keep on put, going every day so he does it for 10 days 100 days uh, going on nothing happened one day a farmer walks by the side just like that he walks by the side and this guy is, this guy was doing this one the farmer comes and asks what are you doing no there is a belief that if i put with faith if i put an apple here god will appear and he is going to grant me my wish then this guy said oh is it like that then he took an apple he put then god appears there now this holy man was jealous come on 100 days i have been putting on this and nothing happened you guy just show up like that and you put and boom how is this happening because you said uh, if you trust and put the apple god will show up that's the trust he had we come every sunday to church 
we pray every day for somebody do we have the trust that god is going to make the change in my life starting from my life then to my neighbor then to my family then to my society i know lord i am coming today to church i pray or i ask pastor to come and pray but i don't believe this is not going to happen <laughs> you agree you agree right so let us let us uh, take uh, next one the last one i would say that we expect god to answer our prayers in our time frame and in a way we expect it to happen how many are following me on that that is many of us including me many of us we we do not know see before coming to this place to worship here like when we had uh, the church in the other place we were praying for a place and we were uh, you know and even some of our friends who showed great interest we would join we would do this that we prayed and then when we had started the church and we were moving on some of them they did not show up and some of them they were telling that oh this is not going to happen uh, you know comments were coming like that then we had we felt ourselves why lord this is happening we believed in you we prayed and we moved on to why this is not happening because with our limited knowledge with our tiny little brain we expect the god almighty do things in our timeline in our knowledge in our wisdom our god is a god who is apart from all these his ways are wondrous his ways are marvelous his ways are powerful which is always good for us hallelujah so we expect god to answer to our prayers in a way we want in the timeline we want i tell you this morning this is my last one i would say my dear brothers and sisters when you are when you, in your prayers are not answered if you if you are if a thought comes in your mind say that okay your prayer is not going to be answered just leave it i'm telling you this is a satanic thought that's the trick of a satan i'm telling you how many we have an infant here one infant small children we all had babies small infant kid you know small infants right those babies do they open up their mouth and ask mummy i want milk or i want food do they ask when they were sleeping they open their mouth and ask no but how as parent mother father you know that the lady, the girl, the baby is having a pain it is sleepless or it is hungry how do you know that how do you know come on i i want some answer from the from the congregation how do you know that by crying sometimes the baby doesn't even cry it just turns around and sleeps but then immediately the mother looks after puts the head in the proper position how do you know the baby is in need yes brother francis how do you know here what i'm trying to tell you here is we human beings by the gesture by the signs the even a slightest movement we understand our children what they need isn't it god the father knows better than we even sometimes we didn't we need not ask him but he knows why our prayers are not answered or why we feel that our prayers are not being answered because we may be having one of these six points that i told you we may be holding on to one of these six things if you are so i encourage you today go back home in the presence of the lord lord i want to get away from this one because god listens god our god we can never ask questions to the lord sometimes we do that foolish thing in our life why this is not happening why what is this i don't want this come on sometimes we become over smart smarter than our creator eh we try to become at least asking questions did we ever do that come on let us be honest why lord can a vessel make its maker why he made it a vessel not a pot 
we don't have that right please let us submit as we are ask the lord lord give me the grace you may be sitting here today without an answer for your prayer but i tell you my dear sister or brother evaluate like review think about you analyze yourself if i am having one of these points then let me take it away away from me god has no limits he always 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 listens to us could you say amen to that hallelujah i want to close with this uh, verse from psalms 77 10 and 11 this is my infinity but i will remember the years of the right hand of the most high i will remember the works of the lord surely i will remember thy wonders of old the lay is the same god who who saved daniel from the lions den the same god who put joseph as the governor the same god who was with me at the time of trouble it is the same god who is with me he watches over me he listens to me there is nothing impossible for my lord if that if my prayers are not answered or if my prayers are not being answered there is something that i need to evaluate in me can we all stand up at this time and ask the lord for this grace today yes please come forward i encourage you all to pray take some time to pray ask the lord, lord i need to i need to have this grace today lord at times i have thought that my prayers are not answered at times i have thought that i have been waiting for this grace for many years But today lord i am here thanks for these words is anyone here who is prompted in your heart the holy spirit spoke to me who might want to pray for this special grace today who might come forward and say that lord i want to pray i thank lord i thank you lord for this words that you gave me today today onwards i am going to pray in a different way i just want to sanctify myself first before i tell i complain that my prayers are not answered I encourage I welcome one of you you might come forward and pray for all of us for all of us pastor bob praise god hallelujah shukana randari ashi holy god okay let us all raise our hands and pray as we finish with it father we thank you for this evening this morning lord as you brought us together to you taught us why my prayers are not being answered but now that we understand lord you always listen to us lord you speak with us lord but we are at times weak we are taken away with other stuff we 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 keep the grudge in ourselves we hold on to something that is not pleasing to you we have all the other stuff in our hearts father forgive us this morning lord father take control of us lord lord make us a vessel pleasing to you an instrument that would be a mighty weapon to build your kingdom in this place lord we ask in the name of jesus christ